Hello everyone, this is Direwolf20, and welcome to part two of my Blood Magic Spotlight. Uh, today's episode we're going to be covering, uh, probably we'll definitely get to rituals, that's the first thing I want to cover, and then we'll start taking a look at some of the alchemy stuff that's available. Uh, you're going to need an alchemical uh, chemistry set to get started, and we'll be taking a look at this guy as well. Uh, and if we have time, we might jump into maybe some of the armor creation aspects, but I'm not sure if we'll get there or not. If we don't, we'll definitely be covering that in part three. So, Blood Magic. Time to take a look at some of the cool stuff you can do with this mod. Let's get started. All right, guys, to get started with rituals, you're going to need a couple items. First off, you're going to need some ritual stones. This requires some obsidian and some of the tier 2 reinforced slates and an apprentice blood orb. So you definitely need a tier 2 altar to get started with this guy. Then you're going to need a master ritual stone, which requires the tier 3 blood orb. So you're at least going to need a tier 3 ritual to get started with this. Luckily, that's the one that we've already made. That's all you really need at this point. Uh, you need a tier 3 blood altar, and then you're going to need a couple more items. You're going to need elemental inscription tools. Now, now there's four of them that you can make with a tier 3 altar. Uh, there's the elemental inscription tool of air, which requires a gas tier, uh, earth, which requires obsidian, fire, which requires magma cream, and finally, uh, water, which requires a lapis lazuli block. And then you're finally going to need the weak activation crystal. This is what's going to activate your rituals. Um, this requires that lava crystal, which we saw that could use uh, to smelt stuff, and a tier 3 blood altar. Okay? The other thing you're going to need to do with this activation crystal, by the way, don't forget to right click it. Uh, otherwise, you might be confused why it's not activating rituals. You want to make sure it's bound to your player. Because, like most things in Blood Magic, uh, the activation and use of these rituals is going to drain from your soul network. So make sure you have a divination sigil ready and waiting to make sure that you have enough uh, life points to do whatever rituals you want. Now, in order to make these rituals uh, operate, you need to use the master ritual stone and the ritual stones themselves. And then you're also going to need those inscription tools. So let's take a look at how this works. Every ritual needs one master ritual stone, and that typically goes right in the center of the ritual, like so. And then, in order to get your ritual set up, you need to place uh, ritual stones nearby. Now, I'm going to do one of the most basic and simple rituals that's available. All you need are four ritual stones, like so. Now, you need to uh, dye these ritual stones by using some of the elemental inscription tools. This one happens to require four water runes. So we just right-click on the ritual stones with the um, inscription tool. You'll also notice, by the way, that this thing is um, you know, losing durability here. The good news is that you can recharge the durability by just right-clicking it. Uh, however, that does use a little bit of life points, so keep that in mind. Okay, now that we've got this ritual ready and activating, uh, we can activate it using the weak activation crystal. Simply right click. This is known as the ritual of the full spring. Ta-da! What this does is it creates a water source block on top of the ritual stone that can constantly be refilled. So if we grab ourselves a bucket here, we'll note that as soon as we pick up the water block, it'll automatically refill. And if we, uh, you know, cover this up and break it again, it'll automatically refill. And every time it refills that water block, Let's see here, um, 2035, pick it up, it refills, 2010. So a small amount of life points required to constantly uh, keep full of water. Not bad. Now that's a pretty basic ritual and nothing too exciting, but it's pretty neat nonetheless. Another cool ritual that we might not check out here is... This one, the Serenade of the Nether. Very similar, though almost opposite, it requires fire runes on all four sides of the master ritual stone. What do you think this does? Well, because I mentioned it's similar to the water one, you might have guessed that this creates uh, lava. Now, if you do try and do this and you find out that your activation crystal isn't working, it's probably because you don't have enough LP. The Serenade of the Nether is a bit more expensive. It requires 20,000 life points in order to work. So before we get too crazy in these rituals, I'm going to go ahead and get a creative mode only orb of testing. This guy will fill your life um, network pretty quickly. Creative mode only, of course, but now I've got a ridiculous amount of life points. You can see there's no recipe for it. Um, it is creative mode only. Pretty nice for testing. Okay, now let's try and activate this guy. There goes nothing. And we can see that that did, in fact, use up about 20,000 life points to activate. Now, every time that you want to uh, grab some of this, so let's see here, we'll grab ourselves a bucket, it's going to cost 500 LP to replenish, as you can see. So we just lost about 500 LP. Looks pretty good. This is a really good way to, uh, you know, power some stuff. Uh, and Forgecraft 2, I believe, I'm using this to power our base. Pretty nice. 
So do keep in mind, of course, that as this is using uh, your life network and your soul and all that stuff, do be aware uh, that you don't want to run out. So let's go ahead and uh, drain our network here. So now we have zero LP. Uh, note that just like other things, you will start to get the nausea effect if you run out of life points and your rituals are still activated. So this one is pretty cool. You need some air inscriptions going on here, and you'll get yourself this nifty ritual known as the ritual, uh, the interdiction ritual. This thing will prevent mobs from being nearby. So if you place a sheep near it, you'll note that it quickly gets pushed away, and the sheep or any animals or enemies or anything pretty much aren't allowed to get in there. It only works on mobs. It doesn't work on players, but it prevents uh, creatures from going into your area. So some of the more advanced rituals are much larger than this basic 3x3 three three area that I've so far carved out. Uh, some of them can cost as much as 20, 30, or even more blood runes, and they have all different kinds of uh, colors and everything else that you need to do. So what I recommend you guys getting as soon as possible is this nifty gadget. Uh, this is the Ritual Diviner. It requires uh, one of each of those elemental inscription tools, so you're going to need to make them anyway. And it does require some diamonds and some emeralds, but it's super useful. The reason for that is that it will automatically place down the stones for you, and it'll automatically cover them as well. So you can see here, currently it's set to use the Ritual Full Spring, which we saw just a moment ago. Uh, it requires four water stones, as indicated there. All you have to do is write Right click on a master ritual stone and it will automatically place uh, the block for you. Now if you don't have enough space for the block to be placed down it won't replace what's already there. So make sure that you've got enough space uh, for the placing to happen. That's pretty important to note. Uh, but once you've clicked on this a few times here you'll see that it places down everything as needed and it's ready to go and now we can quickly activate the ritual. This is really useful trust me because some of the ones we're about to take a look at are much more expensive and have a much larger area. To change this, simply shift right click and you'll see now that we switch to Serenade of the Nether. Ooh, Ritual of the Green Grove. That's a good one. There we go. What this does is it works just like the um, Sigil of the Green Grove in that it increases the growth rate of plants on top of it. So, first off, all we need to do is activate this bad boy. There we go, now it's running, and we can plant something like cactus nearby. And you'll note that the cactus is going to grow a lot quicker when it's on top of these, uh, this 3x3 area right above the ritual. So it's a really nice way to uh, grow things more quickly. And just for comparison's sake, um, it's just been a few seconds here, and these uh, cactus over there have grown already, and uh, this guy has yet to grow. Let's jump ahead through some of the rituals that are available. I want to show you the Ritual of Magnetism. This one's really cool and definitely one of my favorites. Let's come over here and start activating it. Dun 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 dun. As you can see, quite a few more blocks. I told you these things start to get more complicated. What this one does is really cool. It searches an area below the ritual in a 7x7 seven seven area, and not at this point in the mod, but I think like the next version of it, it's going to be upgradable so that it can search a larger area. And what it's going to do is it's going to start pulling blocks up from underground. The only blocks it pulls up are things that are not boring blocks like dirt and gravel and stone. It's going to pull up any ores that it finds underground and place them inside this 3x3 three three area directly above uh, the master ritual stone so you can see here it's pulling stuff up pretty cool right um, now it is pulling that up out of the ground so eventually it'll run out of things to pull up but like I said you'll be able to upgrade the range of this thing um, pretty quickly awesome right so there we go. We just filled up this 3x3 three three area and whenever we mine one of the blocks it's going to quickly pull up another one for us nice it's pretty handy. So a great way to clear up the area. Now, if you want to automate this even further, you might want to take a look at this next ritual, which is known as Ritual of the Crusher. What this does, uh, let's see here. Dun, 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 dun. Uh-oh, there's something that we can't place. What is this? The Ritual of the Crusher is a more advanced ritual, and as a result, you'll note here that it requires dusk stones. Okay, now, um, let's see, inscription tool... Dusk. This guy requires a tier 4 blood altar and a block of coal. You're going to need to get yourself um, an upgraded ritual of the crusher, uh, or uh, an upgraded ritual diviner that has a couple demonic slates and a couple dusk tools on it. Demonic slates, by the way, tier 4 slates. Uh, once you get this guy, then you can start doing rituals with uh, this. Of course, if you want, you can go ahead and um, do the other one. So let's make sure we get the ritual that can handle uh, dusk runes. And we'll switch this guy back over to Ritual of the Crusher. Looks like I skipped through it. 
There we go, Crusher. Now we can place those Dusk Runes. Cool. You can see those guys now were placeable with this one. So these runes are the more advanced runes. What this does is it'll automatically find any ore blocks in a 3x3 three three space below the ritual. Ha! Huh. Pretty uh, handy, right? 3x3, three 3x3. Three, three three. Perfect. And it'll find a chest, or any inventory really, directly above the uh, crystal here. So let's activate this guy and place down a chest. There we go. Oh, cool. It's picking stuff up. Look at that. Nice. So we can see it automatically uh, picking up and breaking the blocks underneath it. And of course, the Ritual of Magnetism is replacing those blocks for us. How handy is that? Very. Uh, there's one upgrade that you can also apply here. Now, this is an extremely expensive upgrade, so I'm just warning you guys right now that this is pretty expensive. But um, if you place 12 blocks of precious material um, around the edges here, you'll be able to upgrade this thing to either do Silk Touch or you can do, um, let's see, uh, Fortune. So if you place gold blocks here, 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 and on the other three corners, you'll get Silk Touch. And if you put diamond blocks or emerald blocks, so let's see, diamond blocks, like I said, this is pretty expensive, uh, you'll get Fortune. So for every four diamond blocks you place, you'll get one tier of fortune. So right now this thing is doing fortune uh, one, one, two, three, four is now doing fortune two, and one, two, three, four is now doing fortune three. Cool. But you'll see here that as it adds coal, we just got three coal from one breaking operation, we just got two coal from one breaking operation, we just got one, we just got one. So it's the same deal, right? Um, it's going to work just like Fortune, where you have a chance of getting more uh, stuff. Pretty nifty. So some pretty nice automation there. And like I said, this thing will eventually uh, be upgradable so that it'll search a larger area. Right now, the Ritual of Magnetism only pulls up blocks from a 7x7 seven seven area below it. Neat. Do note, of course, that each operation of magnetism and crushing is pulling from your um, soul network. So this is a little bit expensive to run. If for some reason you'd like to deactivate any ritual, simply apply a redstone signal to the master ritual stone, and it will stop it from running. And you'll note now that it no longer runs. As we can see, it's no longer pulling items up from underground. And uh, if we go back up to the top here... Well, I can't get a... Well, we'll try it. I don't know if it passively works. It might. Yep. Nah, it doesn't. So you need to, you do need to apply the redstone signal directly to the Master Ritual Stone. Didn't get there in time, but as you can see, applying the redstone signal to this one did stop it from pulling items up from underground. And that will, of course, stop it from draining life points. This is known as the Ritual of Speed. When you enter the area, it's going to propel you forward. Recommend hanging on to a sigil of elemental affinity to prevent you from taking fall damage, but it's a great way to uh, quickly leap across the map. If you maybe set up a couple of these between you and your buddy's base. Hooray! So this ritual is a little bit more complicated, as you can see. It's pretty large. It's known as the Well of Suffering. When activated, any nearby animals or uh, enemies or anything like that, so let's, for example, get a sheep, will slowly take damage. So if we place a sheep down here, we should see this guy slowly starting to take a little bit of damage. Uh, every so often, then, it gets a little bit of damage, and it will automatically fill uh, a nearby altar with life points. So we can see there we got a little bit of life points there. And of course, the more uh, rituals of sacrifice that you have nearby, the better. So we can see that that thing did a pretty good job of taking care of that sheep for us. And we'll do the same for zombies and skeletons and whatnot. So it's a nice way to automate uh, your um, collection of life points. Very cool. Uh, now, to go along with this, there's actually an even better thing that you might want to do to add on to it. And that is the very next one called the Ritual of Regeneration. What you're going to want to do is place another Master Ritual Stone right on top of the initial one. You can, of course, put it anywhere. Um, and this guy, again, requiring quite a few things, but it's actually designed so that these two rituals can go near each other. Lots and lots and lots and lots. You can see why you might want to have this uh, Ritual uh, Diviner yeah, there's a ton of pieces here. So let's get this guy activated real quick with the weak activation crystal. There you go. What this does is it'll slowly uh, activate a regeneration effect. Now, it places it on both players and sheep and zombies and everything else. So all manner of mobs and players will get this regeneration effect, but they'll only get it if they currently have a little bit of damage. So you can see here I'm getting regeneration, but once my health is full, 
it'll stop applying the regeneration effect to me. There we go, it stopped. And not until my uh, health is damaged again will it apply it. So this, of course, uh, you know, for every uh, time it applies to a player or an animal or something like that, is going to use some of your life points. But what you can do now is, um, at the same time, both regenerate and damage the sheep for uh, a nice little combined effect here. So the sheep is going to get both uh, regeneration and it, uh, damage. Pretty cool. You should note also that there is a ritual um, called the Feathered Knife, which is basically the same thing, but this ritual will uh, damage players instead of um, creatures. All right, guys, one of the rituals that you're going to need to do, unlike the other ones, which are just really cool and have a bunch of different neat effects, and believe me, I only maybe covered a third to a quarter of them. Uh, there's a lot more rituals to take a look at. Uh, this one is the Ritual of Binding, and it's pretty much required to progress through blood magic. So you're going to need to do this one at least once. What this does is it infuses some diamond tools with some very powerful abilities. All you need is about 10,000 life points in your soul network, and you drop a diamond tool into the center and get ready to stand back. When you activate this with the weak activation crystal, oh, yeah, see, lots of lightning strikes, player gets damaged a lot, I better heal up a little bit, but once the ritual has completed activating, wow, that's powerful, um, you're going to get, ah, this nifty little gadget right here. This is known as the Bound Blade. Cool. Uh, now you do get different tools that you can place in here. I think you can do a pickaxe and an axe and a sword and a shovel. Uh, those are all the four tools and those are the ones that you can do. Now when you have this guy, you'll notice that it's just um, an orb. And when you mouse over it, you'll see it's currently deactivated. That's the state you want to leave it in most of the time because it's not draining from your uh, current life pool, right? So your soul network is safe. But once you activate it by shift right clicking, it turns into its version. And you'll notice here that it starts draining uh, LP out of your pool just by being activated. So just the fact that you've now got it ready to use means it's going to start draining stuff, okay? Um, and simply shift right click to deactivate it again. So, this sword is important because it's the only way to get a certain resource. You'll note that when I attacked that guy, he had a debuff on him. And he now dropped a special item called the Weak Blood Shard. This is going to be used for some stuff in um, Blood Magic here. Quite a few things, actually. Uh, a lot of shaped crafting, a lot of shapeless crafting, some alchemy stuff. It goes into the Blood Altar to get the Tier 4 Blood Orb. It's used in a lot of places. Okay. Uh, the way this basically works is anytime you attack an enemy with it, uh, they're going to get a debuff that lasts for a little bit of time and if they die while they have that debuff on they have a chance to drop one of those items it's not 100 percent but it's not uncommon either the only way to get it is by killing them while they have that debuff on and the only way to get the debuff on is by attacking them with the bound sword so it's pretty much a requirement to get uh progressed through the mod so you're definitely going to want to do it now uh there's some other cool stuff you can do with these tools let's take a look the shovel, for example, does a great job of tearing through terrain, and it's going to clean up some stuff pretty quickly, as you can see. You should also note that not only does it drain life points while these tools are in their activated form, but it's also going to train whenever you use them to, you know, clear some terrain or whatever. So keep your life point soul network pretty well filled. Now these tools also have a very special ability, which is their right-click ability. Ta-da! It's going to clear out a large amount of land. This guy, as you can see, will tear out a large amount of land surrounding wherever the player is. And if you right click again, we'll see that it cleans up a ton more. Now that is using, unfortunately, 10,000 life points for each operation. So let's give that a try real quick. Uh, for 841,000, we're going to dig down and right click. And you'll see now that we're at 831,000. So quite a lot of life points to do that special ability, but it's also really cool. Uh, the pickaxe has a similar bound ability here that whenever you mine, it's going to, you know, do a little bit of a uh, soul network draining. But you can also right click to clear away any uh, ores and any stone. So again, 10,000 life points, very expensive, but also, as you can see, very powerful. Do yourself a favor, make sure that you have enough life points in your soul network to use this tool, because if you don't, you're absolutely 100% without a doubt going to die immediately. Uh, and then finally, you've got your bound axe. Um, you know, probably pretty obvious what this guy is going to do. Uh, he chops down trees, and he's going to do it in a nice large radius as well for you. So let's give it a shot. Ta-da! Looking good. Like I said, make sure you have plenty of life points before using that right-click ability. And the uh, cheat mode that I gave myself really did give me a lot of life points. It is hard to get up to 10,000 life points, especially earlier on. Later on, not so difficult, but earlier on, definitely. So be very careful with these tools. And uh, it's unforgiving. Don't use it near your house or anything like that. 
All right, guys, let's take a look at alchemy. The alchemic chemistry set is what you're going to need to get this going. It's really not too hard to make. Simply a weak blood orb, transmuting a brewing stand, and some obsidian. Nice. So this chemistry set is basically going to allow you to brew potions. There's a few things you're going to need to do to get started. Uh, first off, you're going to need to get yourself uh, a glass bottle. And you're going to want to drop it into your um, altar right here. And you'll see that this thing will quickly transform this uh, glass bottle into a uh, flask. Flasks are capable of storing potions, and they're extremely useful. And it really actually makes the potion system within Minecraft uh, pretty fun and interesting. Oh, you can see we ran out of uh, magic here, so let's refill this uh, life essence just a little bit. Make sure not to kill yourself now. It does require a bit of life points to go ahead and fill up that. There we go. Got ourselves a flask. Nice. So now that we've got a potion flask, we can start filling it. However, we need a few things before we can start filling it. I'm going to show you how to create a couple of the basics. Uh, one of the things you're going to definitely need is a simple catalyst. This guy is going to be kind of like your base starting point for almost everything you need to do. It's uh, a sugar. I think we need a couple redstone, a glowstone, and a gunpowder. And you'll see this thing starting to brew in just a moment. Sugar, two redstone, glowstone, and gunpowder. Oh, and it should be noted that some of these require a higher tier orb, so make sure you have the right one in there. You'll know it's working when you've got some red particle flux coming off the top, and the items will be consumed and turned into whatever item you've crafted. So a very simple crafting mechanic right there. However, things get very complicated very quickly. Don't worry about that. Uh, one of the other things you're going to need to do to get your most basic potions is get yourself a binding agent. This is the device that's required for binding uh, the magical properties into the flask. You're going to need one of these for every potion effect that you want to have. Um, so you can see here it requires just a piece of clay and two of these simple catalysts. Easy enough, so I'm not going to go ahead and craft it. Now to get your potion effect, simply take one of these empty potion flasks, like this, and place it in the alchemical chemistry set anywhere you want. Now if you want to get a, uh, an effect, you have to figure out which items give which effects. I'll show you a couple of them here, but there's a lot of them actually. There's like 20 different potion effects you can get. Some of them were added by this mod, so I might show you one or two of the effects that were added by the mod that aren't part of vanilla Minecraft, but most of the vanilla Minecraft ones are available as well. Uh, what you can do is go ahead and place... Uh, um, let's say for sugar, for example, if we want to get a speed boost. You can go ahead and place that in there. And then the final component you're going to need is that binding agent. Okay? You'll know it's working again because you've got the red particle effects. Cool. And it'll go ahead and do its alchemical chemistry, and you'll get a potion flask with eight uses of the potion flask. So you can use this eight times. It's very cool. However, if you want, you can now modify it. So let's take this potion flask and go ahead and uh, now we want to modify the speed effect that's on here. So we're going to have to put another piece of sugar in. Now we can either make this last longer or have a stronger effect. So let's go ahead and take a look at the lengthening and power catalysts. The lengthening catalyst will increase um, the duration of the effect. So if we go ahead and put the mundane lengthening catalyst in here, you'll see the potion effect start to brew and this thing will go from a two minute duration dun 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 to a five minute 20 duration cool uh so that's what that does now the other effect that you can place on here again we're going to need to put sugar in because we're modifying the speed effect is to use the power catalyst what this does is as you probably uh can guess is change it from speed to something like speed two and if you're looking around in my inventory already you might have noticed that there's higher tiers of these so you can get the average lengthening and power catalyst requires for example two mundane catalysts and a standard binding agent something that's a little bit more complicated to make so a lot of chemistry needs to go into this. And then there's, of course, the greater versions as well, uh, which requires two of the average and the incendium, which is, again, something pretty crazy. Um, so lots of alchemy going on here to make yourself a bunch of different things, but you're going to get some pretty cool effects from it. So if you wanted, for example, uh, you could go ahead and throw uh, the greater lengthening catalyst and sugar on here. And this is not going to add to the current duration, it's just going to replace the current duration. So this guy went up to, uh, oh wow, 18 minutes. Wow, that's a pretty long duration. But you also probably noticed that when you increase the power, it also shortens the duration. By uh, bumping the power up there to speed four, it's gonna bring the duration down to something. I think it's about five minutes there. Yeah, four, almost five minutes. Uh, but you get speed four for five minutes and you can drink it eight times. Can't go wrong with that, right? Now the cool thing about this is you can actually add more potion effects if you want. For example, example, uh, I happen to know that magma cream has a pretty nice uh, potion effect that we might want to take a look at. So let's throw one of these in there. Now we can put another weak binding agent in, but note that uh, there's less of a chance of this succeeding when you're trying to put more than one potion effect 
on a single potion. So uh, I think with a with uh, with the weak binding, uh, it's not going to be too easy. But uh, with standard, I know that is. Uh, let's see, it works 100% for the first one, but only 40% if you add a second effect. So let's go ahead and use the standard binding agent if we're going to be adding more than one effect, and let's see what happens. Dun 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 dun. Hooray, it succeeded. Nice. So now this potion flask will give us both speed 4 and fire resistance. If we want to modify the fire resistance, we just have to throw in another magma cream. And let's say, get a few of them just for demonstration purposes here. Let's say we just want it to be a, a greater power. Yeah, that's probably a good idea, right? We want this thing to be like fire resistance 4. Hooray! Oh, it only lasts 15 seconds. Let's throw a lengthening catalyst on there as well. Probably not bad. Cool. So anytime you want to modify the attributes of a current potion effect, you don't have any problems or anything to worry about. But if you try to start adding some other crazy stuff on there, for example, if you want to put some blaze powder on there, hmm, I wonder what's going to happen now, um, you have a much lesser chance of success. And there is a, a bit of a chance that this potion flask could explode. So you might want to stand back if you're doing anything too crazy. Oh, all right, we succeeded. Wow, we got really lucky there. Uh, let's go ahead and uh, use a weak binding agent. I'm going to use something like, uh, I don't know, a glass bottle. I'm not sure what that gives exactly. By the way, that gave strength. And we're going to stand back again. Mm. Oh, yep, exploded. Not good. So we lost our potion. So don't try to add too many potion effects to one potion. Uh, you can keep trying if you want. Of course, using a standard binding agent, you're going to have a better chance than using the weak one. Uh, but there's a lot of potion effects, like I said, and you can manipulate them however you want. So here, for example, is a potion uh, flask, and I'm just going to go ahead and give it the power catalyst and another piece of sugar there to make sure that this thing doesn't last too long. And we'll find out what happens when we try and drink it. So as you can expect, it says there are eight swigs left. We can go ahead and drink it. We'll get this awesome buff. Ooh, speed four, nice, look at me. Cruising around town. And of course, used up one of the swigs. And we can drink as much as we want, etc., etc. Now, once we've drank all of the available potion, you'll note that it has zero out of eight swigs left, but it's still a speed four potion. Nice. Uh, what we can do with this then is a couple things. First off, if we wanted to, we could completely remove it and uh, turn it back into just an empty flask. Okay. Uh, however, what we might want to do with it is refill it. For that, we're going to want to get uh, the filling agent. So let's take a look at that stuff. Filling agents. You can see there's a weak one, not too hard to get, and a standard and an enhanced. Okay, and these will refill your potion to a certain degree. So if it was a pretty expensive potion and you got like four or five different effects on it, you got really lucky and you managed to get something really good that you like and you don't have to rebrew it all again, just go ahead and drop your potion flask in there with a weak filling agent. Oh, look at that. It's already brewing up. Cool. And you'll see that the weak filling should give it, oh, nice, three swigs back. Now, depending on how many effects you have on here and how many boosts you have on it, it might not refill as much. If you have like four or five effects, one weak filling agent might not even give you one of these refills. It might just give you one. It might not even give you one if you have a ton of stuff on there. So you might need to get yourself up to the higher tier ones just to get some refilling going on. But, you know, it's definitely worth it if you get a really good potion. Now, there's a lot of different effects to explore and a lot of different things to check out. Um, you can take a look at all the different potions. Um, it's meant for you guys to figure it out, but if you look around on the internet, I'm sure there's a list somewhere that shows you all the different abilities and all the different uh, potion effects that you can get based on uh, what you throw in there. Ooh, I wonder what this is going to give me. Hmm. Ooh, absorption. Interesting. Oh, nice. I get extra health. Sweet. All right, guys, before we wrap up this spotlight, let's upgrade the altar once more. You're going to need some more blood runes. 28 of them this time because you're going to need 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 on every side. So you can see this is kind of uh, spreading out here. Um, you're also going to want to, if you're you know doing this in your world, I'd recommend using some of the upgrade runes if you can get them because they're definitely going to make your altar that much better. Uh, however, blood runes are all you really require. So if you want to just get up to tier 4 quickly, that's an option. Uh, you're, of course, again, also going to need any block here. And you're going to want this guy to be up um, just to about the 
same level as a glowstone, and then place a large bloodstone brick on top. It's not hard to get, just a weak blood shard and a stone. Really easy to get, actually. Uh, that goes on top so that this thing is just one block taller. Now you can use any um, solid block here. So it can be from mods, it can be whatever you want. If you want to use nether brick to make it look cool, however you want to do it. And the same goes for these stone blocks right here. I'm just using smooth stone because it was easy to grab, but you know, whatever you want to use is cool. Uh, once you've got this system set up, you should have a tier four blood altar. Nice. So a lot more uh, options available to us now that we've upgraded to tier four. Uh, as you noticed, it does require you to use uh, the large bloodstone bricks though. So you must get that bound sword or somebody to give you some weak blood shards somehow uh, to get this. You can also, as you can see, uh, get more weak blood shards once you've got one. So, uh, you know, if you lose your bound sword and you have a master blood orb, which is by the way, the tier four blood orb, uh, you can easily get a few more. So pretty cool. We've got ourselves a tier four altar. Now, before we wrap up, I think there's one more ritual I want to show you that's really, really cool. All right, guys, this is one of the most advanced uh, rituals that you can perform. It's called the uh, Ritual of the Falling Tower, Mark of the Falling Tower, something like that. And it's going to use about a stack and a half of ritual stones. So it's quite a large amount of ritual stones you're going to need for this. Um, and I'm not going to lie, they're probably most of them not going to survive this. Let's take a look. Whoa, that thing is quite large. That's right. Uh, so it's obviously a pretty large size ritual. Now the other thing that you're gonna need for this thing is this guy, the Awakened Activation Crystal. This thing requires some pretty expensive components. It's a uh, much better version than the Weak Activation Crystal and it's required for this ritual. Some rituals are so powerful that the Weak Activation Crystal can't work with them. You're gonna need to get the Awakened one. And the only way to get this is either get a Nether Star or get a Demon Blood Shard, which involves summoning a demon, which is probably even more difficult to fight than the Wither. So we're going to take a look at demon summoning probably in part three, uh, but just keep in mind that is something that's going to be, uh, you know, in the future. But I wanted to show you this ritual because this was the part of the spotlight where I was showing you guys rituals, and it's a really cool one. So let's take a look. Uh, in order to activate this guy, you need one million life points. I currently have two million, just I want to make sure I have enough, but you need a million, so be prepared for that. Um, it's pretty expensive, but it of course does a pretty cool thing. All we got to do is activate it by right-clicking on the master ritual stone and give it an item of sacrifice either a uh, stone block, iron block, diamond, or nether star. And depending on which one I drop in there determines uh, the powerfulness of this effect. So I'm not using the most powerful one. And I'm going to back up just a little bit because this thing is about to summon, oh, a pretty large meteor. Whoa, look at that. So that's not the largest meteor that's available. Uh, there are larger ones that can be summoned if you use another star, for example. But you can see that this meteor has a ton of ore in it. And it's a pretty nice size too. So tons of stuff inside, definitely worth mining up and taking a look at. Does do a little bit of destruction to the environment, so watch out for that. But it's a nifty mechanic that I thought was worth showing you guys. For now, this is Direwolf20 signing off on part two of the Blood Magic Spotlight. Hope you guys enjoyed checking it out. It's really a fun mod, as you guys can probably tell at this point, and there's a lot to see still. Uh, we have um, at least one more episode. Probably, like I said, it'll be a four-part series, so there'll be a lot more to check out. All right, guys. Take it easy.